Hi, this is Mr. Miller, and I'm going to do a little bit of work on some prerequisite knowledge and skills on some things like percents, decimals, fractions, taxes, and time. And these are some important things that we need to have in place in order to do some work on financial literacy. So let's take a look. All right, so as you can see here, this is for uh, the Maths 9 course. Um, and uh, we're looking at financial literacy. Before we get into the financial literacy, what we need to do is talk about these prerequisite knowledge and skills around using percents, sometimes changing them to decimals or possibly changing them to fractions, doing some work around taxes, and we need to be able to deal with time as it sometimes is indicated in different units. So we want to be able to convert back and forth between weeks, days, months, years, whatever is necessary for us. So just a little bit of background information here. So let's start with some notes and examples. First of all, when we're looking at something like this, 24%, most of you probably know this means 24 out of 100. So that's important to keep in mind because it allows you to, for instance, change it into a fraction. And working with fractions, it's often easier to have them in lowest terms. So for instance, the 24% would be 24 out of 100. Now, uh, if you're working with that fraction, it's often easier to work with fractions when they're in lowest terms. So what I would do is I would divide the top and the bottom by whatever is a common factor of those two numbers. So I could divide by just 2. That would be a start, and that would give me 12 over 50. And I realize at this point, oh, I could reduce a little bit more. So I'm going to divide the top and the bottom by 2 again, and that would give me 6 out of 25. Now there are no other common factors between the numerator and denominator, so I can stop there. And some of you might be saying, well, can't we just do this all in one step? And yes, absolutely you can. So this is the alternative is if you're starting with the 24 out of 100 and you recognize there's a common factor of four, and that's the greatest common factor between those two things, you can divide by four top and bottom and that will take you directly to the fraction in lowest terms. So next, if we're looking to change 24% into a decimal, of course we understand that 24% means 24 out of 100, and when you write it like this, it really means 24 divided by 100. Now, you can always do that on a calculator, but if you um, are aware of this, it's easy to recognize here's where the decimal place is and dividing by 100 will effectively move that decimal place two spots to the left. So it's 0 0.24 is the decimal equivalent. So working with a percentage and changing it into different forms makes it easy to figure out percentages of numbers. And this is something we're going to be doing a lot of in the financial math unit. And so if we want to find 24% of 60, here are a few different ways. One way is to write the 24% as 24 out of 100. And then you're just looking to figure out what it is out of 60. So that's our goal is to figure out that. Now, people working with uh, these things that are called proportions, if you're not sure what to do here, let me show you a, a simple example that makes it kind of obvious. If you've got something like 3 quarters and you're trying to get its what out of 8, most of you will recognize, of course, it's just multiply by 2, right? I can just multiply by 2. Um, but the thing is, where does that 2 come from? Right? What is that 2? That 2 is 8 divided by 4. 
So if we are multiplying by 8 and then dividing by 4, if we're t to get this result, if we're taking 3 and multiplying by 8 and then dividing by 4, then take a look at the pattern that happens here. We're doing 3 times 8, which is multiplying diagonally across two of the numbers that we know. And then we're dividing by the third number in the proportion. So that's what I'm going to do as well here. So to figure out what this should be, I'm going to do cross multiplication, the two numbers that are diagonally across from each other that I know in the proportion. So I'm going to go 24 times 60. And then I'm going to divide by 100. So when I do that, um, here's what I get. So I'm going to go 24 times 60 divided by 100. And I get 14.4. All right, so this is one way. Now, some people are going to say, um, I have a different way that I like to use. And so that's fine. Uh, like I said, I'm going to illustrate a few different ways, and you can choose a way that you would prefer. So, or here's another way you can do it. You can take, if you want to find 24% of 60, you can do 24% times 60. Now remember the 24% can take different forms. You can write it as a fraction and multiply it by 60. And in that case, you may want to write it in lowest terms to do the multiplication. So dividing the top and the bottom by 4 reduces it to 6 over 25. And then multiplying by 60 makes it quite easy to do. Now the 60 as a fraction is 60 over 1. And there's even further reduction that I can do to make this easier. So I can uh, divide this by 5, and I get 5. Divide this by 5, and I get 12. And I go 6 times 12 is 72, and divide it by 5. Now, I can leave my answer like that, or I can write it as uh, 5 goes into 70 14 times, and then there's another 2 fifths. And then at that point, if I want to have it in decimal form like I had, um, previously, I can write that as 14.4 because I know that 2 fifths is 0 0.4. Or you can just do 2 divided by 5 on your calculator to figure out that 0.4 part. Um, and some people are not really interested in doing much of the heavy lifting on their own, doing the calculation on their own, and they just want to have a real quick way of doing this on a calculator. And so they may just go straight to doing um, the 24% times 60, they may just do it like this, 0 0.24, the decimal equivalent, times 60, and then you just bring up your calculator and you multiply it, and that would give you the same result, 14.4. So, uh, you've got a few different methods, maybe somebody has another, and um, as long as that's working for you and you're showing your work, then I'm good with that. So let's take a look at what's next. We've got um, some information about tax. So first of all, the federal government here in Canada has something called a goods and services tax. And you hear people just talk about it as GST. And it's applied on most purchases. Now taxes are a really complex thing. And sometimes GST is waived on certain items. And sometimes GST can actually be a little bit more for certain specialty items. But I'm not going to um, get you bogged down with all of the laws around taxes. Because they, again, they can be quite complex. If we're making a purchase, you can just assume that GST is going to be charged. And uh, like I said, it's usually 5%. We're going to go with 5% for all of our calculations. But of course, sometimes there are some exceptions to that. And it's 5% of the sale price. So if you've got something that's regularly priced at a certain amount and it's on sale, you charge 5% on the sale price. Now, each province has its own provincial sales tax, and short form for that is PST. In BC, it's currently at 7% on most items. 
And again, I say most items. There are exceptions to the rule. There are some cases where PST is not applied at all. There are some cases where PST is a little bit more. Um, if you went to buy a luxury car, you may find that you're paying a little bit more in tax. Um, again, I don't expect you to know all of the rules around tax. So just assume if we're talking about a purchase being made that GST and PST are applied and they are at the regular rate. Now I should mention that some provinces do combine the GST and PST together and they call it the Harmonized Sales Tax or HST. So I believe BC had this for a little while and then they decided to go back to having GST and PST separate. So that's where we're currently at and most of our examples that we're going to be doing calculations on, we're going to use the BC um, rates for GST and PST. All right, so let's look at an, a tax example here. We want to find the tax and the total amount paid for a $35 purchase in BC. So let's talk about the GST first. The GST is going to be 5% of $35. And so I can do that as 0 0.05 times 35. And I'll get an answer. Now, before I do this on the calculator, I'm just going to do a quick uh, mental math calculation. So what I want you to notice is that 5% is half of 10%. And finding 10% is actually quite easy because as a fraction, this reduces to one-tenth. And if I look at $35 and I want to find 10% of $35, this is just $3.50. So if I know that's $3.50, I can probably figure out half of that pretty easily in my head. I think it's just $1.75. Now, it's always good to do a little bit of mental math, uh, if you can manage to do it without actually going mental. Um, and now what you can do is you can just verify that 0 0.05, oh, and make sure that you get the right decimal place there, times 35. And yeah, it is $1.75, which is what I suspected it to be. Okay, so that's the GST. The PST, is a little bit more. It's 7% of $35. And if I was going to do a mental math way, I would take the 5% and then I'd also figure out 1% and then I'd add those two things together. So I think it's going to be like, so if I do 10%, it's 350. So 1% of $35 is going to be like 35 five cents so 70 cents so I think it's 70 cents plus a dollar 75 I think it's 245 so I'm just doing that mental math calculation again I did 5% plus 2% um, but if you want you can just do 0 0.07 times 35 and then see what that works out to be all right, so let's see. I'm going to change this to 0 0.07. 245, is that what I said? $2.45, fantastic. So if I look at the, um, the total tax paid, then that's going to be $1.75 plus 245. Let me make this a little bit bigger. $1.75 plus 245. And when I add those two things together, um, it's going to be 3, 4, uh, 20, I believe, $4.20 in tax. So let me just get a double check on that. Uh, so I take that and I add my dollar seventy-five. Yeah, $4.20. Okay, cool. So now if I want to find the uh, total paid with tax then this is going to be uh, $35 and adding the tax amount which is $4.20 and it'll be $39.20 okay cool so there you go now there are some 
notes here afterwards about time. And so most of this should be pretty obvious that one year is 12 months. It's 52 weeks approximately. There's a little bit left over, but it's pretty darn close to 52 weeks. There are 365 days in a year. So again, I know some people are going to say, well, leap year has got 366 days. We're not going to worry about that. Generally speaking, a month is considered to be 30 days. That's approximately. I realize some months are 31, and of course we've got February that's 28 and sometimes 29, but on average, it's close to 30 days. So for calculation purposes, you can use those equivalencies. So now that you've got some notes and examples um, worked out, you should be able to go through and do the practice questions that are on the next page. So here's what it looks like. So it's the same thing we're talking about financial literacy here, some prerequisite knowledge and skills on percents, decimals, fractions, taxes, and time. And I'd like you to do these practice questions to make sure that you have everything good to go. Um, here are a few more questions. So it's not a huge number. The answers are on the uh, page following for you, so I'm not going to turn to that right now. Try to do all the questions yourself first, then check your answers, and um, then if you need to go back and correct, you can do that. And uh, if you need any help with it, just let me know, and I will give you a hand. Okay? And now I'm going to give you a hand for watching this video. Thanks! Alright, have a great day everybody. Take care. Bye.